Considering an RV trip with dogs, in this video we cover everything RV life with dogs. From supplies to get, things you should take care of before your first RV trip. And our running with the poop police. <laughs> Welcome back to the RVR Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. Long story short, we sold most of our possessions in pursuit of freedom, independence, and adventure. <laughs> because life is so short, guys. <laughs> in this video, we're talking about RV life with dogs. Yeah, and we're gonna try to see if Skip will cooperate. We're down in Lemon Bay in Florida. And in today, today's video, we're gonna share about our experience with traveling with Skippy. Everything from so we're gonna cover security. We're gonna talk about certain types of etiquette that you should pay attention to when you're traveling with your dog. Now we see a lot of people traveling in their RV with pets. We've seen birds, we've seen cats. The only thing we haven't seen are fish. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> why? So RVing with our dog is one of the joys of RVing. We absolutely love RVing with Skippy. He's part of the family. We love having him with us. So if you think of something that we haven't covered, please leave it in the comment section. One of the things we love most about our channel is the RV Odd Squad comments like crazy. And if we miss something, you'll find it in the comment section below. So share your experience with us. Let us know what it's been like to travel with your dog and maybe some things that we had missed. All right, so we've categorized our whole RVing with the dogs into four categories. So the first is misconceptions about RVing with your dog. The second category is things to do before you hit the road. The third one is challenges and ways that we've overcome those challenges with RVing with our dog. And finally, we're gonna talk about supplies and get into some really funny RV etiquette stories or right. RV doggy etiquette stories. Yeah, in one campground in Arizona, uh, Verde Valley, that actually have poop police that go around, take pictures of poop, email it to you, and threaten you with fines. Now, we're gonna tell you that story. It wasn't our dog Skippy's poop. Skip, no. It's never Skippy's fault. But we had to prove our innocence, and we'll tell you all about that story later. All right, so first, let's discuss some misconceptions about RVing with dogs. You know, I think one of the big misconceptions is that you'll be with your with man's best friend 24-7, and that, um, you know, he'll always be by your side. The reality is that dogs are not allowed in certain places, such as national parks. Now, we've heard conflicting information. We had a park ranger tell us that dogs are allowed in national parks. They just can't go on the paths, which is kind of one of the the big things you'd go to a national park for in the first place. So, you know, there are places where you just can't take Skippy, right? But, hug. Oh, the other thing that's a big misconception is people are like, oh, well, if you're off exploring and the dog's not with you, he's going to be all alone. Well, when we lived in a sticks and bricks, Skippy spent more time alone. We worked 40 hours plus driving to and from work. I mean, he was alone all by himself for like 50 hours a week at least. Right, Skippy is a fantastic traveling dog. He loves the traveling. He loves the freedom, independence, and adventure that we get as well. And he's a great companion for us on the road. But make no mistake, traveling with a dog, as fulfilling and wonderful as it is, is a lot of work and it does involve some sacrifice. All right, so now let's talk about some things that you should do before you hit the road with your pets. The first one, which you should be doing anyways, is make sure that your pet's shots are all up to date. We've actually seen in some of the rules to the parks where they've requested um, park, they've requested, oh, thank you. They requested the dog shots. We never had to provide them, but we were told that we have to have them ready. So don't just get the shots, make sure you have a folder with all of the paperwork. Another tip along those notes that we just wanted to share real quick, a lot of these park pamphlets will actually have a vet nearby when they're telling you sites to see in restaurants and other local places. A lot of people in the RV space recommend having Banfield as your vet because they are everywhere and the records are universal. And so that's something to consider. And actually our vet is actually a small local vet, but they do know that we're traveling in the RV. So if we need anything, we can call them. But one thing that we did before we took our trip was that we got a year's worth of the flea tick prevention and the heartworm prevention. The other important thing is, is if you're gonna cross borders, pay attention to the recent laws. There is no general guidelines for either Canada or Mexico. Our vet told us to check the laws a week or two before you go in. You might have to go to a local vet, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And make sure you check both sides of the border. We've heard people getting out of the country into Canada or Mexico, but coming into the United States, their laws are extremely stringent. So you wanna be able to bring your dog home. 
and we'll link to the website that our vet gave us that lists all the specific countries and their individual requirements. So obviously something is always a concern when we go out on day trips for four or five hours and we leave Skippy alone in the RV. Now we do a few things. Number one, we have a camera that watches inside the RV. We also have an app that will warn us if the RV loses power so that Skippy won't get too hot or too cool. But what's really nice is to open our phone up and actually take a look and see where Skippy is. Now, Skippy typically lays in his spot by the window when we leave and he stays there until we get home because it's a dog's best friend, right? They always miss you. So as soon as we pull in, Skippy's usually sitting in the same spot that he was in when we left. But make sure your dog has plenty of water. Make sure that, you know, that your RV is temperature controlled. The other suggestion that we've received is stop down to the office and let them know you're going out for a day trip. We have a code to enter our RV that we can actually leave with someone or unlock it if we need to. And then one final tip about when you leave your RV, close your toilet. <laughs> toilet dog. Skippy is a toilet dog. He likes to drink out of the toilet, drives me absolutely nuts, and he's a sloppy drinker. <laughs> Skippy will just walk away from his bowl after drinking and just leak water for about 15 feet. <laughs> Another thing that we did before we went off on our big long trip with Skippy was that we practiced staying in the RV. So he was familiarized with it. We gave him a spot that was his to, to lay down in. So he had a place and you know, he didn't really mind it as long as we were all together. I think that was the most important thing for Skip. Yep. Now we're gonna talk about the challenges involved with taking your pet on the road. So the first thing that we realized really quickly was that his hair, cause he sheds, can be a really big problem. Keeping up on his grooming is non-negotiable in an RV. Right. And the other thing is, is that you really wanna keep your dog clean. So give, give your dog a bath once you know, at least once a month, because what you'll notice is that over time, where when he starts to lay on carpet or he lays up in the seat where he knows is his assigned area to protect us at night and rest, that can start to get a little smelly if Skippy's not clean. So give him a bath once a month. I'm gonna flip this camera around so you guys can see this. This is incredible. He just flew up on us. That is a big crane and they're all over the place down here. Very cool. Look at that birdie. Look at the birdie. All right. Bye birdie. Bye birdie. Good job girl. Another challenge that we've had with the dog is that just as we get cabin fever, he gets cabin fever too. So when he gets bored, he starts being mischievous, like digging in trash and stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff that he never did before. We learned that it had nothing to do with the food in the trash. It had more to do with him being bored. So we make sure that we keep him outside, entertained and with toys and all that kind of stuff. And his behavior has improved a lot. So one of the things you're gonna to wanna to consider is just to check the, the pamphlet that you get whenever you check into a campground and find out what those rules are. Typically every park will have rules for your dog. Some other parks don't want the dog left outside unless you're outside with him. That's kind of a pain because Skippy likes being outside. One of the things we also found is, is that if you're gonna tie your dog up, tie him to the back of your campsite. Don't tie him close to the road. When we first started, we would tie Skippy up to the front of the RV. The problem is, is that when other people were walking their dogs, their dog would notice Skippy and Skippy would notice them. They would startle each other and then an, a barking would, would ensue, you know? So obviously um, you don't want your dogs to get in a fight. You always want to be in control of your pet. So make sure you keep them on a leash with no more than eight to 10 feet. But each park tells you what that length rule is. Another challenge that we've had with the dog is allergies. Just as we get allergies when we visit different places, he gets allergies too. But one of the things that's really helped with that is just to have a little bit of Benadryl. He can have like a spoon of it very rarely, but it really helps him with allergies. Yeah, he gets all gunked up around his eyes, you know, and it's strange. Every place we go to is a little bit different. You also wanna make sure that you're protecting your dog, dog against ticks and fleas. So make sure they have a collar or some type of a treatment. We give Skippy a pill. It's once a month, it's a uh, frontline, and it's an edible one, so he yeah. doesn't have stuff on his hair. Yep because we don't like the chemical drips because sage touches the dog. And even if they say it's yes. safe for humans, we don't trust those type of chemicals. Another challenge with the dog is when you travel. So since we RV full time, there are times where we actually travel outside of the RV. So 
it's been a challenge. Every time we've left, we've taken him with us. But in the past, he stayed at Camp Bow Wow. This is not sponsored by them or anything like that. But we like that because we could actually see on the camera. We could follow him around and they'd show us like what he was up to. Mm -hmm. But that's also another challenge to think about. So yet another reason to keep him up to date on his shots. Because as long as he's up to date on the shots, he can stay wherever he needs to. Yeah, and typically you'll also find that most parks have dog walkers and dog sitters. We just met one yesterday. One of the things that we've loved about Thousand Trails is that most of the Thousand Trails parks have a dog area. The other major challenge is security. And this goes both ways. Like obviously we wanna keep our dogs secure, but then also keeping our RV and keeping ourselves secure. So a lot of tips on how to do that. Yeah, the main tip is for us is that Skippy does not sleep in the bedroom with us. Skippy sleeps by the door. We've given him, we've assigned him, assigned Skippy a spot that is right next to the door on our kitchen bench. Uh, typically, Skip will sit there right next to the door. He can also see out the window or the stairs. So it's a great spot for Skippy. We always know when somebody's coming towards that door because Skippy starts to growl. And God help him, if they ever tap on that door, Skippy goes crazy as soon as somebody knocks on the door. It's kind of funny because Friends will walk up and pat Skippy if he's tied outside and say hello to him. And then they'll walk by him over to the door. And as soon as they knock, Skippy yeah. will startle them because he goes crazy. Yeah. Skippy doesn't like anybody touching our door. So yeah. he's a fantastic alarm system for me. Also, when you think there's a danger outside, which I experienced, Skippy was able to go out and be the point man for me. So I let Skippy out first. Skippy let me know if anybody was around or under the RV before I went out. So dogs are fantastic for security in an RV. Another important safety tip that we learned about Skippy is when he accesses our RV, sometimes he gets so excited to come in the house that he doesn't wait for me to open the door. And we've had a couple times where he charges up the stairs. I don't know why he doesn't see it, but he runs straight into the door and he almost gets knocked out by it. So. Let me see the ball. Typically yeah. dogs are strange. Yeah. If they can see through the stairs, they're uncomfortable about walking up. You know that there's no backing on it. So every dog is gonna be a little bit different. One of the things you can do is wrap your steps with something that will help grab, give them a little bit more traction on those stairs. The other option is, is you just put a ramp in if you really need to. Obviously, if you have an older dog, that's something you're gonna have to do. Next, we're gonna cover the supplies that you need to travel successfully with your dog in an RV. And it's actually not as much as what you would think. Um, obviously, you want really good quality engaging toys. Don't get the cheap stuff because they get bored and they eat, they actually eat it and can get really sick. So high quality like Kong toys work really good for Skippy. And I like to get the ones that squeak and I don't know why, they mysteriously disappear, the squeakers. But uh, The squeakers drive me absolutely insane. Skippy likes ball you know we get him a Kong toy that we fill with peanut butter that mm -hmm. keeps him really busy for up to 30 minutes to an hour that was yeah. my daughter Mackenzie's idea which was fantastic yep. yeah and Skippy eats his toy so it's got to be tough or he'll just chew it up and actually swallow it it's a problem so we we love the Kong harness because it can actually get control of Skippy if he gets a little bit too uptight mm -hmm. You know, and it's a great uh, way to walk him because it doesn't choke him. Yeah. And Skippy's a puller. He likes to pull. And it's important to keep control of your dog all the time. The other issue we had with Skippy is, is that he loves biting um, and cutting through his leash. So we've gotten a pretty good, we've done a pretty good job at training him not to do that so he doesn't do it as much as he used to. And I think he's starting to get it. Which actually leads us to the next thing, which is a good quality leash that your dog can't bite through. <laughs> The next thing you're gonna to wanna to have is a high quality dog brush. Those Furminators are great because you can actually get rid of all the hair. So we've linked to all of this in our Amazon store and everything that we're listing are things that we actually own ourselves. We actually don't have that much. You can do more with less things, but quality things than having way too much stuff for the dog. We also clip Skippy's toenails or whatever you call them. His, I don't know if they're claws. His paw nails, his uh, claws. We do the trimming on those because they get really sharp and sometimes Skippy likes to jump up on people when he doesn't know you. He's very, very friendly. If you walk him on concrete or even uh, asphalt, that's a nice way to naturally keep your dog's claws trimmed so that they're not so sharp. 
The next thing on our list that you have to get is poop bags. And you know, it's funny, a lot of these places we stay in nice RV parks that actually provide poop bags and have poop stations. Everywhere, all over the place. Yeah, so there's no excuse to not have your dog's poopy picked up, but we actually got in trouble with the poop police and we had to plead our innocence. Right, so we're staying in Birdie Valley, which is in Arizona, right? And we get an email with pictures of poop, a pile of poop. <laughs> outside of our RV with an RV in our background, right? Now we know that Skip, it wasn't Skippy's poop, but it was near where we tied him up. So for us, we had to, and we knew who was doing this, we had a neighbor who was walking their dog and not cleaning up after their dog. And I think there was something about scent, having Skippy scent nearby that the dog liked to poop near where Skippy was. So we caught the dog pooping and the owner not cleaning it up. So to defend ourselves and thereby not getting a fine, we sent the pictures over 2,000 trails to prove our innocence. <laughs> so one of my biggest pet peeves since I've started RVing, and we've done a video of this, is people that do not pick up after their dog. This drives me insane. There's no reason not to pick up after your dog. And we see this everywhere we go. People just are lazy. If you're going to have a dog with you, be responsible for that dog, pick up after him. You know, there's nothing worse than stepping in a pile of poop. The next thing you wanna make sure that you have with you is a way to monitor the RV. There's so many products out there, but make sure that you have a way to tell if the electricity goes out and what the temperature is inside the RV. Yeah, we have an app that will let us know, warn us on my phone if we lose power to the RV. Power management can be really important. When we were in uh, Yosemite, we were stuck on a 30 amp site and we have a 50 amp. So we were popping the electricity quite a bit. So whenever we left, we would turn everything off except for what we needed to keep the RV warm when Skippy was in there. We also have a video camera that we can check on right from my phone and take a look at Skippy. Now, typically Skippy is always sitting in his little designated area, staring out in the window, waiting for us to come home, right? Skippy's awesome. But it's a great idea just to be able to have those things, not only for security, but also making sure that your dog's okay. And that ties into the next thing that you wanna make sure you have like a dog bed or a doggy blanket, but you want him to have a comfortable space that is his space. Check out our next video, RV Water, where we do the Skippy test. Skippy tells us which is the best water to drink. Enjoy the video, guys.